Okay, we're now joined by Thiel Kent. He's the CTO for BW Offshore. How are you today, Thiel? I'm very well. Thank you, Doran. Thank you for joining us today. Thiel, I'd like to start by asking you, what do you think are the key challenges within the FPSO sector? And in your opinion, what are the ways to address these? Well, the key challenges uh, for uh, the industry right now is to return to decent profitability. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, how we do that is, is the industry has uh, learned from its experience and, and, and there are various things that need to be addressed. First one is, is we need to perform, especially in terms of our projects we have to deliver. Uh, the second important aspect is, is uh, we should be disciplined and the discipline essentially comes down to only accepting reasonable uh, contracts which uh, will enable us to basically make a decent return. Uh, during the boom, uh, uh, the industry you know, had too many entrants, too many ill-disciplined investors. Uh, we signed up uh, contracts that were not sustainable and we're still suffering from that. So uh, that, that is being remedied and it's simple for us. We, we have PSO contractors know what we can and cannot do and we should only sign up to what we can do. And, and that will return us to profitability if we do that, if we deliver the project. And then the final challenge of the FPSO industry is still competent personnel. It's uh, very hard to get uh, uh, competent personnel. A lot of people over uh, the last two decades have left the industry and even though not enough new people have joined, so we're forever competing for competent people at all levels, almost everywhere in the world. Now, from your point of view as a CTO, what interesting technologies or innovations do you see lately in the FPSO field and how do you think it will affect the industry? Well, I, I think the most interesting, it's not that high tech, but technical development in the FPSO industry is the shift to gas. Is, is, uh, it was very hard to imagine even half a decade ago that anyone would come to an FPSO, which is a big oil storage unit, and put a pure gas unit on top. Yet the economics and the efficiency and the real estate and the flexibility that an FPSO offers has proven now. We and our competitors, there are numerous large gas FPSOs around the world. It's a very, competent, a very efficient technology. So there are technical developments there. Um, obviously, FLNG is and will continue to become a technical reality and a lot of the FPSO contractors have worked with that, but commercially, large-scale FLNG is kind of out of reach for FPSO, so it's a commercial limit that, that... So technically, where FPSO contractors will come in is more at the small-scale FLNG, and, and that is where people will see. Otherwise, uh, a lot of technical developments that we personally interested in are a little bit more on the industrialization as is trying to standardize and industrialize the manufacture of FPSOs and and these are technical things you know the same as the car invests a lot in its production technologies and in the details and the car still looks the same but gets better with time the same or FPSOs will get better and even though uh, they won't be markedly different. In the end, you take today's car and compare it to a car from 10, 15 years, then you can see the difference. Well, it'll be the same for the FPSOs. There'll be a lot of gradual technical manufacturing assembly changes. And uh, the FPSO that you will see in five years, when you then actually turn around and look at an FPSO for 10, 15 years ago, won't be the same because the whole industrial process and a lot of the details will have changed. Now, going to the commercial aspects of things, uh, what are your, the yet-to-be-explored opportunities in the FPSO sector? Well, as is, you know, I'm a, I'm a down-to-earth engineer, so trying to guess the future is not necessarily... Is it, but definitely, as per my previous comment, we see a lot of potential in gas FPSOs. So we do see a lot of potential in, uh, you know, small-scale FLNG, but there is still potential in other gas to liquids scenarios there is we've been you know a number of us have been working on uh, scenarios for recovering sulfur 
uh, with uh, FPSOs. And uh, so uh, there are still some areas where we can see there will be growth or development. And then, of course, there's always the unknown unknowns, which uh, I can't guess right now, because if we knew, then we'd be working on it. Right. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Now, we're having a Congress now in Asia, and I think it's apt because Asia is somehow playing quite a role in the FPSO development. In your opinion, what role will Asia be playing in the future development of this industry? Well, is is actually at the receiving end, uh, we, you know, the market for FPSOs in Asia has been decreasing. It was the pioneering area for the FPSOs almost uh, early on, and it used to be the biggest part of the market, and now it has become a smaller part of the market, and this has to do with the fines and... and, and but Asia will always continue to play a very large role in the manufacture and the engineering and the building is, is and in that regard, uh, there is competence and infrastructure and skills and know-how and critical mass, whether it's, you know, the Singapore shipyards, the Korean shipyards, Japan, China, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, all these uh, countries have elements which are big competitive contributors to the manufacture of FPSOs or their top sides or their engineering, even India in terms of engineering. So Asia will actually continue to play and for us, you know, actually think about it is most of our FPSOs that are deployed in Africa were all engineered and built here in Asia and that will continue. That will definitely continue. And as far as the usage, well, that will depend on oil companies' success at finding oil in the region, or gas. And that, you have to ask the oil companies, no less, but the future is there. We're just at the receiving end. Now, we are just talking about you, <laughs> talking about the future again. But uh, I know you're an engineer background, but at least looking ahead, can you give uh, some, some uh, some of your thoughts on how will the FPSO sector evolve with the next Yeah, as, as the whole sector, what we see is, is what we think is... Uh, the best analogy, we think, is how the drilling business, for those of us who are old enough, changed between the late 80s and the early 90s. And so we've already seen consolidation and there probably will be more. Okay, and, and there will be, uh, you know, same as happened in the drilling business over the 90s, even more than we see, uh, there will be three, four very large uh, FPSO contractors and a few smaller ones, but not much more than that. And they will become very, you know, and I think we will return to profitability. Even, you know, the oil price will go up and down, but we know what to do and it will become a very attractive business. It's long term, so it will take a number of years. But uh, I think, well, and people in the company, the people who fund us, and I think our colleagues, uh, there is uh, quite a lot of future. We have to stay disciplined, we have to find the people, but uh, it will, you know, we'll end up in another five years with probably the same players and maybe one or two more, or, but, a lot of the small ones will be gone and consolidated into the larger ones, and, 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 but people will be making money. On that optimistic note, I thank you, Till. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day. Okay, thank you.